Second, so we'll call the meeting to order at six o'clock. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Mm -hmm. um, approve the minutes of Tuesday, February 27th. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? All right, hearing none, so moved. Um, consent, um, no, board correspondence. Is there any board correspondence that anybody would like to share? All right. Um, public comments. I, I, I don't see any public on. Is there anybody, Ray? I don't think so. Okay. Um, so reports to the board. Jamie, you're up. Good evening. It's, it's great to have such a really nice turnout. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have one new uh, member <laughs> to the full board. We've had um, two boards reorganized. Sharon, of course, has three members, so all three are voting members. But I just wanted to really quickly introduce Nancy Pageway, mm -hmm. who's a board member on the White River Unified District Board that represents Bethel. <laughs> and Nancy's a voting member now. So Nancy's in here. It's probably hard to see Nancy oh, oh. <laughs> down the end of the table. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, just a reminder, as boards reorganize, there could be new members joining. I'll try to introduce folks to the new members as they join. And then in June is when the full board reorganizes after all the other district boards have completed their reorganizational meetings. Um, so, uh, legislative updates, I provided an update in my packet in regards to, um, the literacy bill. Um, I also just wanted to point out that the v within the VSBA today updates, they did give you an update on any type of education related legislation. This is one of the bills they mentioned. Um, <laughs> There's nothing within this bill, as I, as I pointed out these bullets, I actually wanted to point them out because I feel like it aligns nicely to the work we've been doing with the science of reading, but also within our, our MTSS, our system of supports, our multi-tiered system of support. So I don't see anything within that bill <coughs> that would cause me to pause or alarm, and I've double-checked that with our chief academic officer and, and our principals, and they're feeling the same way. So... I just wanted you to know um, that it, it's a bit affirming that that bill's aligning to the work we're doing. Michael, do you want to ask your question now, or do you want me to keep going? I just want—I well, just, just wanted to ask. It's about this. So when you're done, I just have a quick question about this. Okay. You want to do it now, or you want me to? Well, keep there's going? there's language in here, and I'm sorry I don't have it up because it's on. Anyway, it's on a different account, but it's about banning some practice with a that, which I didn't understand. So it's one of the bullet points that says that it's. I have to go farther back up, Ray. Uh, uh, notify document. Uh, the bill goes on to ban the three queuing system. What yep. what, are they, what are they talking about? The three queuing system. It, it's. Anna can go into it more if she, if she do you want to? Sure. Yeah. I'm so gonna, the three queuing system that. is um, a way that uh, we have taught reading for uh, a, a period of time. I won't even say it was that long. That basically said that looking at the first letter or first sound of the word, right. looking at the picture, and then look, <laughs> thinking about the context of the sentence would, will help you decode that word. And you can imagine that that might work in some very simple, like cat is you know, reliably going to be cat when you see a picture of a cat and you can see those sounds and can yeah. very quickly uh, fall apart once the words get to be multisyllabic and the pictures go away and you lose one of those cues. So I think it's, it's a system that is just not a very reliable and it's why you often see our... Um, across the country where you see those reading scores start to go down in third grade when the pictures disappear because we've taught they've ta a long time taught a system that doesn't actually um, reliably hold up beyond the first couple of years of reading yeah I, I i apologize for asking i've just never heard it referred to as three queuing system and yes, I, i'm also, weird I'm also the words like that yeah you know you knew it <laughs> yeah it's just also curious to me that the legislature is banning anything i mean that strikes me as really interesting language uh i is that in their purview to do that, Jamie? Yeah. Wow. I mean, in the state, I think we need, I mean, other, you know, local control in regards to curriculum, but 
I mean, I think we saw that play out a bit in regards to the reach of the Secretary of Ed's reach um, during COVID. Um, in, in general, they try to provide it back to local control, but yeah, no, and it definitely, certainly in law that they could ban this. Wow. I mean, it just, I mean, I'm, I, th- I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I do think it's a, a really interesting point that the banning of anything, where does that step into the weeds? Where would that be like the school board telling, um, you know, the principal and the school um, how to teach? So it's just, it's interesting. And if that, if you ban that, where does it end? I'm, you know, worried about books and all sorts. I mean, although the state has taken a different tact on that altogether, but I don't know. Just the banning of anything strikes me as a pretty serious and somewhat radical step. So just my own two cents. Nope. Good point. I, I no, I appreciate it. I was more speaking to that three uh, part queuing system is not something we would do here. You know, I, I, I totally get that. And I'm not arguing that. It's just that going to the extent to ban something from, at the legislature relative to instructional practice opens a door to banning other things. And I just find that extreme. So I, that, I'll stop right there. Sorry. <laughs> take your take all of your time with that. I agree with you, Michael. The um, so reach out to your representatives. That would be you know my advice um, in regards to letting folks know how you feel. It's already this bill is out of the Senate, so it, it's with the House now. So it would be the House of Representatives. Those are the representatives you would be reaching out to. The. Uh, the other bill I wanted to just point out that may cross over uh, out of the House to the Senate is the PCB testing bill that I have talked to you about in regards to pausing testing right now. Um, we'll see. I have it on authority that I do think that that will be approved by the Senate. That is where it got paused last year, um, was in the Senate. And remi- a reminder that that and it's worth you reading that bill it's a lot about the science that was initially used in regards to testing of pcbs Um, it's also about trying to ensure that um, if we're testing that the state's providing funds to assist with remediation Um, which they put some money away last year but you know it was about 30 million and 16 million of that money went to burlington um, and so I, I think what they're finding is, is that they need to figure out how the Ed Fund may generate some additional funding to support schools if they're going to continue to test for PCBs. And there's talks about that whole operation possibly um, not being in the agency of Ed's lap, but actually would be taken over um, by the Department of Health and Human Services. So stay tuned there. Um, in regards to that bill. That's the other one I wanted to highlight. And then um, we do, the governor did introduce um, Secretary Saunders on Friday. Um, and I sent that information out for folks to review. Um, I had someone ask me today if superintendents had met um, and, and no. And my sense is that there is uh, a superintendent's um, meeting happening next Thursday. I'm going to be curious to see whether or not um, Secretary Saunders is on that agenda. That agenda has not come out yet. You're going to be there? Yeah, my plan is to be there. Right now. If Secretary Saunders is there. If Secretary Saunders is not there, I probably will not be there. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, a question and then a comment. Um, the question is, the um, S-204 legislation as it's drafted in the Senate going over to the House, will that make our private schools that receive public funding through tu- tuition payments under the same requirements as being required under for public education educators under Act um, uh, Senate 204? Does it cover private schools? I don't believe so. I have not heard that. Yeah. Distinction made. Why not? Good question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm basing that on, and listen, I'm basing that on that we don't even have the same school quality standards still, Bill, for private schools and public schools, right? And so I don't have any reason to believe that this bill is going to cover 
uh, private schools. Okay. Even when it came out with the equity standards, those have not been rolled out out of egg quality standards yet because our State Board of Education wants to have a whole different parallel system mm -hmm. for what independent schools have to do in regards to those equity quality standards <clears throat> versus public schools. You're, so you're referring to like, stop for school choice? I'm yeah. talking about the where, where, where our students go under choice if we they go to a private to... school. Yeah, are uh, they uh, are going to get the benefit of having higher standards as required by uh, uh, Senate 204 as pub if they, if they chose a public school? And it just seems to me that um, the, the, the public's taxpayers' money should get a certain return. And this is one act that says they want to make sure that the kids in this state get a, 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 an adequate education, K through 3, by the way, that's the K through 2 are, the, are not covered under um, Vermont cap testing right now. So they're trying to catch up on that, uh, but it's, it, it's, it's inconsistent. My two comments are, one is that I totally agree with, with Michael. I don't think this state legislature should be banning anything. And it just scares the heck out of me when I think about other states in this country that we love are banning this things and that things. That's not the role of our legislators at all. And uh, I thank you, Jamie, for uh, we should pursue that with our, our state representatives. The second thing is, uh, Jamie's comments on uh, Senate Bill 204. You read his comments, he's not afraid of this. You listen to Anda and our team, they're not afraid of this. This is what we're doing, and we're doing it well. And so we've got a state, proposed state law that says everybody should be doing what we're doing right now. And I think that is heartening, and I think that um, deserves an understanding of the full board that we've got something good going here. And we're not afraid of having some laws that says what we're doing is the right thing we're doing. And... Um, it's, I'm just amazed because you can't say that. We've got 55 uh, supervisory unions in this state. How many can sit back and say, with, by, hear by their superintendent saying, we're doing this. This is nothing we're afraid of. And uh, I think we should celebrate that. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Stacey, have you got a note? I do. So... Our district board met last night and discussed this. And so I looked over um, the text of that bill. Uh, so bill, it does seem to cover public schools and you know, approved independent schools. And I know the definition of that becomes a little bit squishy, but that's covered for what that's worth. Um, and I agree with you and Michael, I think it sets dangerous precedent for the state to be banning specific types of curriculum. Um, Last night at my district board, we discussed uh, kind of the costs associated with these things. Uh, Jamie assured us that our, our district is already doing all these things because most of them are wonderful. Um, but it does raise the issue of uh, the state mandating yeah. districts to spend more money on specific things. And as we know, there is no more money to be spent at the district level. Um, and I feel like... Um, there is a certain obligation, even if it does, even if it doesn't apply to us directly, and even if we're like a tiny board, to just raise to raise those questions and to float them back to uh, back to those bodies who are who are legislating this stuff. Um, you know, whether like I'm not going to come out in this meeting and say like, they're overreaching because I don't know. I haven't been watching those hearings, but there are some points in this text that 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 I do, that don't sit super well with me. Um, and I do feel like part of our responsibilities as board members should be to, I don't know, to voice that concern in some way. Yes, agreed. Agreed, Stacy. well said. Eric. Briefly, I, I, while I support the uh, pausing of um, testing as it relates to environmental, potential environmental, environmental issues in schools, I am curious as to how we are going to manage uh, parents and others, guardians and community members who may have questions about our buildings and whether they are safe buildings for our students in the face of 
passing of text testing. Are you looking for an answer to that, Eric? Or? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that I need an answer tonight. I think it's something that we need to consider because I, in Stratford anyway, we've already had um, uh, at least one uh, parent um, voice their concern about um, the uh, contaminant in the school and when we would be testing the school. And while I happen to believe that the school is likely safe because the construction that has happened in the school is post, post the, um, the existence of those chemicals and construction uh, materials, I, I think as a as a big board, we ought to be thinking of uh, any communication that ought to be going uh, out to parents, guardians, community members about the safety and well-being of our schools. Yeah, I mean, I would I would hope too that we might get some further guidance possibly from Montpelier, right, in regards to how that's going to be rolled out around communication and won't just be us. Um, and I would hope that they might help take a lead on that. Okay. Anything else for Jamie? All right. All right. Onda. Onda. Okay. Um, I guess as usual, you have my report. Uh, talk a little bit about the um, conference I attended a week ago, two weeks ago, I guess at this point. Um, some of the presenting I did and learning I did there. Also, the work we're doing on our report cards and proficiencies uh, aligned with our strategic plan. We're in the middle of uh, state summative testing with VTCAT uh, happening. Uh, I think I was on an office hours today for the state and the uh, director of assessment there said today was the single highest testing day of the of the window so far with twice as many uh, tests being started uh, as any other day in the in the this is our third I think the third week of testing. Okay. Uh, that's the kind of metrics they they cover um, and then shared a little bit about the professional learning that we are doing it as an administrative team which includes our principles around the universal design for learning and inclusive ed. Um, and how we think about uh, planning for, you know, towards those those proficiencies we've been working on really hard over the last year and a half. Um, so now the next step is how do we how do we make sure that all of our teachers are able to plan uh, to meet those and thinking about what are the obstacles that students might face and how do you how do you design instruction that um, can overcome those and really think about students uh, learning and, and showing their learning in a um, variety of ways. Uh, and and the last part we finished up our SU wide professional development on in-service half days. Again, really good um, feedback from folks, really uh, favorable responses to particularly the time spent together. So even though there's sometimes a little bit of grumbling about travel uh, from across the different schools to one place, that is universally the one area where everyone seems to be very, um, very pleased and uh, benefits from being with each other. So I think yeah. it, it turns out to be worth it even if you don't are not always so keen we had good weather for all the travel days this mm -hmm. year so we didn't have to make any calls around uh canceling or postponing because of weather on those fridays so we like <coughs> happy to answer any questions or talk about anything further anybody anybody i got bill over here i don't know if you can see okay bill yeah okay, um bill. two things one is um it's exciting to have our leadership team, leader of our academic efforts uh, at a state convention or a conference um, and showing the way. And I happen to believe that our goal, I don't know how long it's gonna take us, but I happen to think that we've got all the makings of being not only the best um, rural educational center in Vermont, but one of the leading rural educational centers in this country and this is one example of how we're, we're doing it we're showing the way we're explaining what we're doing uh, people are learning from us and from that uh, they're joining together to strengthen um, what they're all trying to do together i always believe if i could hitchhike do it so you don't have to create the whole world as long as you're smart enough to know what's what makes sense and to, to learn from it and, and apply it 
The other thing is I want to compliment the professional development days. Every, it sounds like every at the end of every professional uh, day or afternoon uh, session, you ask, the, you, you give them a survey. How do we do? That's rare. That is rare. Uh, why is it rare? Because it's, it can be dangerous. People could say, I can't stand this thing. And you got enough of that. And um, th 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 so I'm just saying, we learn from it, um, and it reinforces that we're doing well, and it guides us further um, down that road of success. So I think that's great. Thank you. All right, anyone else? All right, anyone else? Okay. Um, <laughs> Director of Special Director Services. Of special services. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. So again, you have my report. Um, <laughs> uh, just, just a couple of points to highlight. Uh, yes, we're busy um, doing a lot of interviewing um, right now, so I'll have more of an update, hopefully, on um, of actual secured hires uh, next month. Um, also, uh, working with um, Haley Zuride, the director of One Planet, um, we're still continuing to work on coordinating um, summer and coordinating interventions in One Planet together. Um, so we're busy doing that, and that's coming along really well. Um, the next piece is that there's this new um, restructuring kind of <laughs> for next year. Um, we'll still have special educators. Um, but special educators, um, in a sense, almost have two very heavy, distinct roles um, as part of being a special educator. One is this idea of being um, a case manager, and that's a lot of, you know, scheduling and facilitating meetings, um, making sure students' programming is running and in place and things are going efficiently. Um, you know, making sure accommodations and modifications and things like that are in place, communicating with a lot of outside providers as long as along with like the families um, and also classroom teachers. And then there's this other role of actually educating, providing interventions um, to students. Um, and, you know, for years now, it's kind of been almost like an 80-20 split, you know, 80% of the time has been in front of our students educating, providing those, those interventions, and 20% of their time, basically one day, um, is allotted to all of this other case management work. Um, and what we're finding is, is that sometimes the case management work is overflowing into the other days, people are becoming really overwhelmed, things are falling through the cracks. Um, so just as a way to be more efficient and proficient in how we are providing services and case management and working with families, we're kind of breaking the roles up and having people do these two very distinctive roles. Um, as part of their job next year, instead of blending them together, they'll have they'll be split apart. Um, and in that case, then kids will actually have more time in front of adults receiving intervention, because uh, right now it's four days a week for half an hour. The person will be available every day, five days a week um, for a half an hour, depending on the number of students, maybe even longer periods of time. Uh, interventions wouldn't be um, disrupted, you know, because of now there's an emergency happening with a student or a low crisis with a family. I have to, you know, veer and take care of that and I have to miss students. Now there's somebody else who will do that. And we have special educators that can continue the path with our students and in intervention. Um, and also um, it's kind of a model that's happening now with larger schools. We may not be large in uh, like student size, but I feel like we're large in our location and our vast. So this will actually give people more of a focus. Um, you know, they'll actually get to know families better, have the better connection with families, be able to reach out to them sooner. Um, and I just, you know, hope then that, you know, each of the the people in those roles will feel better about their job because they're not dropping something or something has to take place of something else. 
Um, so that's the, the hope. We've been talking about it as a department um, since the middle of last year. So everyone's on board. Um, you know, they've helped write kind of the job descriptions that go with them. Um, looking at uh, kind of the, the hiring process at this point, um, I reviewed it with Jamie today. You know, ideally, if we could get four people, if I could hire four people, um, we will be completely covered in all of those roles. Um, and we will be below what's um, in our budget for the number of special educators. Right now it's 14 and we'll be under that. Wow. So um, just to give you an idea of kind of where we're going. Any questions about that? I know it can be complicated. Yeah, and that's yeah, Michael, Michael, just, Michael, I just, I just want to just clarify. clarify. So, so sure. uh, I mean, this, uh, this, this all this makes, all makes total, total sense, sense to me. To me. Um, uh, so the, the special services case manager is, is, if I'm a special educator, am I still case managing or has this now been completely shifted to a different person? That, there will be a case manager. That's one right. person. Yeah. And then a special services educator who is a special educator who will just be providing intervention and education. They're both special educators. They're both special right. educators. But when I but the point is is that you're talking about if I'm delivering services, I'm just delivering services. Yes. Well. Someone else will be helping to over case management. Okay. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yep. No, it makes it makes a lot of sense in that. I think that's gonna it's gonna work out well. Thank yeah. you. Anything else? Thank you, Annette. Sure. All right, we are on to um, uh, Tara. Tara. Good evening, everyone. You have my report. It outlines what's happening in the business office during the month of April. We have two budgets coming up again on April 15th. So I've been working on getting those informational mailers out. Uh, they should be hopefully out to all voters next week. They went to the mail distribution center yesterday and today. So watch your mailboxes, First Branch and Stratford. <laughs> and then I'll happily answer any questions. <coughs> Big thank you, Tara, for getting those all redone and re-out to people. I know it's a tremendous amount of work. Thank you. Any questions for Tara? All right. So, um, Ray. Yes, hello. As I uh, bring up my report, which was... Uh, wrongly titled for next month. This is actually this month's content. Um, one thing I would like to add in addition to my report is uh, we have had 500 test sessions started in VTCAP and 400 completed, which I think is a good pace to be on at this point with the remaining window. And uh, it has gone really smooth. <laughs> uh, we believe in science. Nice. <laughs> All right, so uh, we have been meeting, uh, continued meeting on uh, what our future student information system will look like. Uh, Anna has mentioned the report cards. And uh, of course, the communications plan is up for discussion tonight. And I would entertain any questions here or virtually. <clears throat> any questions, anyone? I've got a question. All right. Thank you, Ray. Oh, go ahead, Bill. I thought Ray, would do, Ray was going to sneak this to having this uh, the last paragraph and the last sentence in the last paragraph, but yours truly caught him. Here we go. I ask everybody in the room, what does E-rate project stand for? Come on now. Come on, quick. Everybody knows that answer. I don't. Ray, will you help us? Sure. Um, Everybody who has a phone bill pays a FCC charge every month, and that money goes to a, a fund to support schools. Uh, in this case, this is uh, supporting uh, the Wi-Fi boxes in the buildings, uh, switches, stuff like that. 
So the E stands for? Uh, I'll be honest, I don't remember. It's got to be education. Or efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> 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 electronic. You definitely caught me there, Bill. I haven't thought about it as anything other than E-rate for uh, <laughs> 10 years. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. I will have that updated for next month. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spend any time on that, please. All right. Um, we're on to policy that. committee. Uh, the policy committee met right before the full board. We went over the drug and alcohol policy. We've got some more edits and stuff to make, so we're going to be looking at that policy again. At the meeting, we also decided we're going to start meeting twice a month, um, starting on the 9th, correct, Jamie? Yep. Starting on the ninth. Um, so, so that is the plan moving forward. We're going to have a longer policy committee meeting, and we're going to meet twice a month. We need to start working on the policy, on the board bylaws, um, and that stuff. So, one meeting will be committed to the board bylaws. One meeting will be committed to the policies that we're working on. So that will start next month. Anything else? Anybody want to add from the policy committee? Okay. Uh, draft one of the WRVSU communication plan. Yes, yeah, so you, you have a, a draft. Um, we've shared this out with the admin team. Um, by we, I mean um, Kate McLean, our coordinator of communication, and uh, Ray, myself, and Mary Shell, our community school coordinator, has been working on this. We're very interested in feedback. Um, if folks have been able to review this and provide some feedback tonight, know that we'd be happy to take it. I'm also more than willing to have one of the four of us connect with board members if they want to sit down and provide additional feedback. Also, um, I'm happy to take feedback via email. My goal is to try to collect feedback from folks and be able to get another draft for possible consideration of adoption by April. Um, it may take us until May. The strategic plan took about three months to finally get where we wanted to get to with it. But um, I must say that I, you know, this is one of those projects that um, is important. I think it's going to give good direction for um, all of our stakeholders moving forward. If you look, there's actionable work that needs to happen within the plan um, over the next three years. Um, and I hope that it's a tool that's useful for um, both internal and external communication you know, for our families, um, but also our employees in regards to how to navigate communication throughout the SU. So, um, yeah, it's it, it actually you know, there's some things already that I know that we need to clean up, but it felt good to get a draft to you for a review. Yeah. So I'll just kick it off by that, and then happy to, to take discussion on it. Any discussion right now, guys, on this? Anybody have any feedback? I think it looks great, Jamie. I'll try to read through it a little bit more detailed when I get back, but I think great work, you guys. You didn't see your hand. Hi, Kathy. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. I can't see you in the room, so I'm sorry if you put your hand up and I don't see you. Behind, I'm hiding behind Jamie. Um, I see. Hiding tonight, are you? First, uh, <laughs> this is a tremendous draft of something that we all need to do better, which is communication. And secondly, it, it basically has six goals, external, internal, um, <clears throat> with a lot of meat in it that, um, that from the get-go is going to help. And, uh, for instance, the chart on page six about um, basically how you handle a series of communication issues. Um, wow. And that alone is something for us to, to learn by put in our notebooks as well as the organization to, and to communicate that to parents. Uh, and community members. So um, I really like that. The one thing I think still needs work um, 
is translating uh, the plan into measurable results. And so the question I ask is, if we do all things in, in year one, how do we know that we've succeeded? We could say, well, we've had X number of emails, we had X number of social media things, we had X number of meetings, we had, um, how do we know we've succeeded? And I think a plan needs to have that, especially a strategic plan. And that's one thing I'm gonna encourage, uh, sidebar, and I appreciate Jamie, uh, meet with whoever yeah, yeah. to express those sort of things. Um, we go back to our, our goal setting as a board and for Jamie and every one of our goals that we set for ourselves, there's a way to measure whether or not we've succeeded in carrying out that goal. And we need to know that. It isn't like, oh, we did it. Do we know what we did it? So I encourage that to be part of, uh, strengthen that part in this um, in this draft, which I think is, um, is timely and is, it, it's going to bear fruit. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Anyone else? Yeah. yeah hey, this is Dustin. Hey, uh, yeah, I just didn't know if um, if this might be something totally separate, but uh, as far as the communication, as far as when somebody, you know, like we had a, a kind of a unique year this past, you know, year, um, as far as losing somebody, um, and so, as far as communication about that to uh, the community and staff, is that is that addressed in in this document as well, or is, is it like a overall category, like personnel uh, being dismissed? Yeah, I'll take a look and see exactly whether or not that's captured or not. It may be, but not explicitly as it needs to be. Okay. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks great too. Well, uh, if uh, so, we should be celebrating when people join us uh, and recognizing when they depart and capturing yes. that the plan to make sure that that is happening systematically. Thank you, Dustin. All right. Thank All right, you. guys. Thank you. All right. Um, anything else, Jamie, on that? Are you good? Um, yeah, no, other than just as I really want to highlight the work that went into that. Yeah, for, for yeah. those three. I also would tell you that I hope you take a good look. I think it really s specifically articulates the work that we're looking to try to get done in regards to our community school work. And so I think it's a real roadmap for that work. Um, and really does a nice job, I think, of allowing us to have some benchmarks that have we progress monitor that work in regards to um, just increasing accountability around the work of our community schools. So that I think feels really good for our community school coordinator, because I think that Mary also feels like it's a really good roadmap for what she should be prioritizing. So. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for everybody who worked on this. <clears throat> All right. Um, 8.2 is Portrait of a Learner Update. Uh, so the central office admin team um, met um, with a graphic designer from uh, Up For Learning, who they've, they've uh, hired. And remember, the community school grant is supporting our work around this portrait of a learner. So they're right now taking all the data collection and analysis that occurred from the last time um, our cohort, who represents all of the schools across the SU, came together. And I believe Michael and Bill are part of that group now too, um, which is great in regards to having support representation. So they're working on mocking up a draft for us in regards to the visual, which is what to me is like so important about our portrait, portrait of a learner, is that we really want this, you know, two page document to be able to really speak to what we want our kids to know, understand and do in regards to the transferable skills 
So think being an effective communicator, having grit, right? Like things that carry that you carry on and transfer content area to content area, but really I think are a lot of the markers that we want in our kids in regards mm -hmm. to speaking to success in the secondary and post-secondary level. Um, in a way that I would, I hope visually that, you know, all of our stakeholders can connect with, that would be the goal, right? Like, not that it's a 30 page document, right? That it's a document that when someone looks at it, they know what's really meaningful in regards to those things at WRVSU. So I expect to have a draft of that back for review um well ahead of the april meeting is the timeline they gave us they felt like that we could have it um a couple of months a couple of weeks ahead we'll take a look at it as an admin team provide some feedback and then it'll come to you for our first review in april as a full board so that's where we're at with that The, the cool thing is the work that's gone around with the portrait of a learner is that uh, we were able to collect data and get feedback from our kindergartners all the way up through our 12th graders. Um, so there was a large subset of data there. And of course, that could look really different from a class being able to, you know, advisory at the middle or high school level giving feedback about what's important versus, you know, a first grader drawing that having a swimming pool at the school is really important mm -hmm. to them um right and a priority but that may actually speak to experiential learning right and the work that we do in outdoor ed so it's like teasing that data out that i think was the key um as we as we worked on this project so yeah i'm excited about that i feel like we're on a good place um in regards to our portrait of the learners uh work which will also tie back to your communications plan because the whole goal would be that it'd be really clear for us to communicate you know what we hope our learners leave with no matter what time they exit um, one of our schools all right uh, 8.3 wrvsu mentor mentee program i think um i'll make a i'll try to set something up so that group can get back together just to review what we have and have it out for this year's new board members yeah, so far we've had one new board member come up board. I have not assigned a mentor yet because I, I wanted that group, Kathy, to get back together. Yep. To look at feedback we collected. We did, uh, we did push out a survey to start collecting feedback from board members. Just a reminder that that went out. If it's helpful, I can have Ray push it out again. Some of you have filled it out. I have reviewed some of that data. We received some good feedback in regards to you know how do we possibly build some time in throughout the year um where mentor and mentees may be able to connect to the start of a meeting or a breakout session out of a meeting um that i think might be worthwhile for this group that subcommittee to think about um because i think timing sometimes is just hard for folks right i know everyone's busy um and just making certain there's some dedicated time um, for mentors and mentees to get together. And yeah. maybe even just we're scheduling it and not that people have to come, but that it's like on a calendar and maybe that's helpful for folks. I don't know. I think it's worth that group talking through Kathy. Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to that group and see when people can get together and we'll just have a short meeting and touch base. All right, um, what is next? It's just a draft of the calendar. I just wanted to, uh, Onda has been working with, again, representation across the SU with uh, teachers, principals, uh, drafting a calendar. This is, we have not won this for action in the last few years because really it, it's, it's, it's something I wanna share with the board. It's not really an actionable thing from the board and statute. We need to align our major breaks with um, our regional tech center. Our regional tech center is uh, Randolph, just to remind folks, we do have students who also do choose to go to Hartford if Randolph doesn't have um, an offering. Um, 
meeting for our high school, right? And so they lump the high schools within the SU as linking to the regional tech center. So our region is Central Vermont Supervisory Union, Randolph District, and us. Um, and so that those are the three SUs that are aligned to this calendar as regards to our breaks. We started <laughs> two years ago, we received feedback from families that it'd be really helpful if we made certain we aligned one of our lawn breaks in February, April to the north and one of them to the south. This calendar once again does do that. We switched it for this coming year. The February ones aligned to the north this year and the April ones aligned to the south. So that if we have, you know, families who have kids um, at RSU and also have kids in Hartford or, you know, it, or districts that align to the south, Woodstock would be an example. They'll now have their um, April break aligned next year. They've had February the last two years. And if we have students who are attending a school to the north, um, they'll have their um, winter break aligned. So it's just trying to best meet the needs of our families. You know, for families who have split, um, like a student who's going to a Southern school, um, but also with us and in the past, our calendar always aligned to the Northern schools prior to making this change. And often those families specifically that attended Hartford um, or Woodstock would miss out on having either February or April aligned. So in general, we've received good feedback from folks around doing it this way. I wish, this is actually a goal of mine, is to try to get the VSA trustees to sit down in a room and say, why can we not align these two breaks? Um, it, we, it does not require statute. Superintendents at the trustee level could make this happen for families. You know, what I would say to you is it's really this, uh, it's just the group of us in the middle, <laughs> central part of the state that have this issue because if you get south of Windsor, they all align to essentially the same two breaks. And if you get Barry North, they all align to the winter breaks. Um, and so it's it really does impact the center of the state. Know that I continue to bring this up to my colleagues because I, I believe that we could compromise and figure this out. So I haven't given up hope on that, actually. I mean, it wouldn't be a totally aligned calendar, but I do think as superintendents, we could settle on the same April and February break. Yeah, you would think. So I'm going to keep advocating for that. I'm starting to get a little more rank with my colleagues. Um, it's crazy to believe in Winooski Valley now, which, you know, there's 12 of us. I'm the third longest tenured superintendent <laughs> in the in the Winooski Valley. So um, that means, you know, I might be able to have a little more pull. Is our superintendent sounding starting to sound a little <laughs> smug? Well no, actually I was just taking a shot at how how not long a lot of soups stay in a position. <laughs> oh, well, that's just the way we like it. Yeah. So Jamie, why? What do people have against having so the big thank you nancy i mean the biggest answer i get is talking about smug is <laughs> that the northern schools don't want to align their vacation and the winter vacation with the february break of a lot of um southern states because they want to have uh tourists come up and ski at that week prior okay. and then their kids <laughs> could have access and I like that on, idea right? myself. But so, so why that don't answers we do me that? to the north, <laughs> right? Um, and so we do do that next year. Yeah. Why doesn't the rest of the southern states not do that? Uh, southern SUs not do that? It's my sense is because they have this long standing uh, link to some of the schools in mass. Um, that's the only way I can justify it, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I haven't been able to get in with the trustees to have that as a full agenda item. It is something that I have pushed on Jeff Francis um, and now um, his assistant uh, executive director Chelsea is now going to be replacing Jeff next year. And it is something I emailed her about again 
um, in regards to seeing whether or not that could happen. Okay. Guys, best something. No, I just realized. I wonder now that we've moved February late, do we need to have President's Day? That I wanted the earlier week aligns with President's Day, which is also pretty common. We don't have that marked on the calendar right now. I don't think it's in our CBAs. Okay. It's the same year with yeah, no, CBA. it's not. No. Okay. No, because we've had that late. We've before. had it before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. This is much more on alignment the way it was. Like mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So no in service on the day before town meeting then. Uh, no, so uh, there is no in service at the day before town meeting. No, the committee wrestled with that, and it was just decided that it was better not to have it that day. Yeah. Yeah. I was um, in communication with my own class of sixty-three high school buddies, and uh, I want to bore you with that, but they would love this calendar because I was looking at it. And it starts August 21st, new employees, mentor training day, August 22nd, 23rd, 20th, in service, no school, August 28th, first day of school, pre-K to nine. So I went on, gee, high school, when am I going to start? They don't start. Well, they start the 29th. They do? Yes. Okay. Well, we do that as a high school orientation day. Okay. Well, it, I just didn't see it, and I was Not going, wow, this is... I ran out of lines. Do you see I had to have to go to the college of <laughs> September? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but very useful. Thank you. The um, other thing I just wanted folks to point out, because I do think that you might receive these questions, is that we aligned our parent conference like um, in service time. We do it over two weeks. And so I did not want students in a building on the 5th um, in regards to elections, because it would, it would, we, it would be really hard with our policy of ensuring that buildings are locked mm. down um, and signing visitors in. A lot of our schools are used as polling places. And it's also been advised in regards to just safety and security schools, not to have schools that have polling places open. And so you'll see that that was traded out for it's an in-service day in regards to conferences. Um, but we won't have people in the buildings that day. All right. Any public comment? Oh, yeah. Are there any action items tonight, Jamie? There is not. I hope. Um, not. I'm hoping next month actually there might be a few, but not tonight. Okay. Um, any any public pop on I didn't see or come into the room? <coughs> All right. Um, resignation of new hires. We need to go over, Jamie. No, I think Annette will have. A long list, hopefully, well, long enough to fill all of our spots by next month. Okay, nice. Um, social emotional goals uh, are listed as a future agenda item. Our next meeting is Tuesday, April 23rd, 2023. And so that will be after the budgets that take place. So anybody who still has out there for a vote, um, good luck. Fingers crossed they pass. Um, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn, everyone. So moved. So moved. <laughs>